Ukraine's commander-in-chief, Valery Zaluchini, published footage on social media today showing him visiting and gathering information at the northwestern Rivne uh, nuclear power plant. The post said Zaluchini wanted to be ready for the possibility of a catastrophic event at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant and that he wanted to see the flow of information between the military and the energy sector. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky warned on Saturday that a serious uh, threat remained at the Russian-occupied Zaporizhia nuclear power plant and said Russia was technically ready to provoke a localized explosion at the facility. The brief mutiny by the Wagner Group is still being discussed in Russia and for the first uh, time, Defense Minister Sergei Shogu said the move did not affect Russia's special military operation in Ukraine. Mr. Shogu was making his first comment since the event. He told officials, quote, our Supreme Commander has already given comprehensive commentary on it. It is about the attempt to destabilize the situation in Russia on June the 23rd to 25th. These plans failed primarily because the personnel of the armed forces were faithful to their oath and their military duty. The provocation did not affect the actions of army groups involved in the Ukraine military operation. The troops courageously and selflessly continued carrying out the tasks entrusted to them. Shogu says the mutiny aimed to destabilize Russia but failed because of the troops' loyalty and saying that it did not in any way impact the front lines. Meanwhile, Ukraine's prosecutor, General Andriy Kostin, says Russian President Vladimir Putin's recent comments about payments to the Wagner Group was like direct evidence that Wagner mercenaries were an illegal arm of the Russian army in the war. Last week, Mr. Putin said Wagner and its founder, Evgeny Prigozhin, had received almost $2 billion from Russia in the past year. Another uh, uh, part of their uh, illegal uh, uh, activity, not, not only illegal, but uh, it's, they are among uh, those who, are, who have uh, who committed the, the most severe crimes against our civilians and prisoners of war. And let's not forget that, uh, from my point of view, Wagner Group also creates threat to, to the global peace. Because their illegal activity in Africa, their illegal activity in some countries of uh, like Latin America, let's say like this, they create uh, a lot of uh, threats and challenges uh, on global level. And everyone understands that uh, not only uh, Russian budget uh, sponsor the activity of Wagner Group, they have a lot of um, illegal uh, financial resources coming from their activity in the other parts of the globe. And uh, my uh, position is very, very clear. Uh, I, uh, I actually uh, in, is in communication with uh, the, our main partners in order to combat uh, fully the activity of uh, Wagner Group globally. Because, once again, it's a threat not only to Ukraine, it's a threat to, to, to global peace and security. And uh, I believe that the uh, combining or uniting of efforts on global level is the key to um, fully stop the illegal activity of uh, such group uh, as Wagner and potentially the other uh, paramilitary uh, group who, uh, which are involved in uh, illegal uh, actions uh, throughout the world, and especially in places where there is no, I would say, um, stable rule of law, there is no stable uh, respect to human rights, so they appear everywhere where situation is already bad. Meantime, the Kremlin says Russia is pessimistic about the prospects of renewing the Black Sea grain deal because no progress has been made in implementing accompanying agreements that pertain to Russian exports. 
The Financial Times reported today that the European Union was considering a proposal for the Russian Agricultural Bank to set up a subsidiary to reconnect to the global financial network as an incentive for Moscow to extend the deal. The deal under which Russia has guaranteed the safety of grain ships heading to and from Ukrainian ports through waters it controls is set to expire on the 18th of July and Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov told a briefing there were not too many hopes it would be extended.